do that report. Operation at a board meeting. A very good afternoon to everyone in and around the continent. Welcome to another exciting installment of Trends. My name, of course, is Katleh Hostelab Maifadi, and I will be holding it down for the next 60 minutes, giving you the lowdown of all the trending stories in art and entertainment. A lot has happened in showbiz this week, and an hour is just not enough for us to go through everything. So let's jump, just jump straight into it. But before we do, please do follow us on at Trends on SABC. Interact with us because we would love to hear from you. First up, a South African legend in his own right, musician Johnny Clegg, officially announced his retirement from public life on Thursday at a roundtable session he had for the media. We will ask him for reasons. Writing his autobiography and performing for his fans for the very last time. Clegg, who is known as the White Zulu, has started his final journey world tour, which kicked off in July, and the final leg will end in November. Let's take a look at what went down. Following a career that spans over 40 years, Johnny Clegg will bid farewell to his Johannesburg fans in a final concert Journey World Tour. In an intimate roundtable session with the media, Clegg reminisced about his amazing musical journey that earned him the title of White Zulu. Clegg first learned the fundamentals of Zulu music and traditional Zulu in Tlangwini dancing with mentor Charlie Mzila while still in his teenage years. When I met Charlie and, and I saw the guitar was tuned differently and was played differently uh, and it really it had been reconfigured and mm. Africanized mm. like mm. the concertina and new ways of playing um, I immediately realized that this was a genre of guitar music like the blues in America yeah. that identified South Africa separately from any other guitar tradition in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to learn it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that was um, an amazing moment for me and transformed my life. Mm -hmm. I, I, that started me on a journey. Now the musician whose music appealed to different races during a difficult time in South Africa is retiring from the industry. In 2015, he was diagnosed with cancer. Being a white man performing mixed Zulu and English songs alongside black musicians in an apartheid-ridden South Africa transformed Clegg into a political vehicle for change. In 1999, he was joined on stage by Madiba as he performed one of the all-time favorites, Asim Bonanga. During the media session, the musician described some momentous occasions that made his career and shot him into popularity. Solyon Kuta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was a hunchback. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, very bright. Yeah. And he said to us, you won't be a national force until you play Orlando Stadium. <laughs> of course, of course. That's like, <laughs> that's Madison Square yeah, Garden. Yes, yeah, yes. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. said, well, we don't know. He says, <laughs> you're going to kill. Yeah, I'm yeah, putting yeah. you on in, in, in. No, of course. I mean, yeah, yeah. And we went yeah. in there, and we were just shocked at how many people came. Yeah. And we played, and we danced, and we were made overnight. That yeah. show was a highlight for me, and for Sipo, and for my band. The tour is an autobiographical show built around Clegg's unparalleled repertoire of songs, which began with the release of Juluka's Universal Men in 1979 and continued through his Savuka years and more recently his solo work. Clegg also speaks out about his battle with cancer and his motivation to push on for the fans who love him. These shows are hard for me. Uh, you know, I, I'm dealing with another... another parallel world that I live in, uh, 
with, with my diagnosis. We have this, this complicated thing where this final journey is not actually <laughs> being final. There's, you know, more, and more, there's more and more shows coming yeah. up. And I don't mind as long as I can do them. I have Clegg heads, Savuka heads, Juluka heads who have grown older with me in the world, yeah. who appreciate what I do and who are genuinely sad and, and want, to, want to make that final connection, you know, and celebrate that. And, and I, I feel quite motivated to do that. The once-off Johannesburg leg of the tour will take place on November 11, 2017, where fans will get to see the White Zulu perform one last time. It was announced earlier in the year that American platinum selling hip hop artist ASAP Ferg was coming to headline alongside Nasty C at the first annual Capsule Fest. It's said to be the first of its kind in South Africa. The festival offers a credible platform that celebrates Nzanzi street culture in all its forms. The fest will host a music concert amongst a variety of street culture activities, all taking place today at the Mary Fitzgerald Square in Johannesburg. Well, ASAP Ferg landed on Thursday. We were at the Mall of Africa where a press conference was held for this exciting festival. Let's check, uh, take a look at what went down. ASAP Ferg is here for a culture festival that aims at being the mecca of all things urban about Msanzi streets. The festival will kick start with a wide array of street culture activities such as basketball tournaments, a skate park, art installations, brand pop-up stores and a whole lot more. But what street culture without hip-hop, right? The festival will also host a music concert with two stages that's got 30 of the illest young musicians in Mzanzi. Headlined, of course, by our very own Nasty C and American trap lord ASAP Ferg. Member of Harlem Bread Collective, ASAP Mob, ASAP Ferg is one of the most influential hip-hop artists of our generation. He sold millions of records and has worked with one of the most influential hip-hop musicians. He's here to share his latest album with us. So talk to me about your album, talk to me about the collaborations and what exactly you want people to know about you from the side. Uh, yeah, I just dropped the album called Still Striving. Um, it's like one of my best work of art because this, this time go around, I felt less pressure like going into it. I just really uh, had an open door policy and I allowed all my friends to come in and create with me, make music. This festival is currently underway at the Mary Fitzgerald Square in Johannesburg. If street culture is your thing, then you should make your way there. Tomorrow is a big day in the business and arts industry of South Africa. Internationally recognized South African Development Agency, BASA, has integrated programs that are implemented nationally and internationally to encourage partnerships between business and the arts, securing a development of the arts sector in South Africa. Not only do they do that, but they also celebrate and give accolades to those who are in the forefront of growing this sector by hosting awards. This year, the ceremony celebrates two decades of business and arts partnerships. The, 45, uh, the 44 finalists were announced last month and we are now joined by BASA Programs and Communications Officer Tepa Diseko and one of the judges, Christina Kennedy, to tell us more about these awards. Welcome to Trends, guys. Hi. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you so much. So, uh, 44 um, nominees, 11 categories. Tell us a bit about that. What should we expect tomorrow? So, um, if we take it back a bit, uh, the BASA Awards pretty much uh, support BASA's broader mandate of uh, making sure that the, the ground is fertile for business and arts partnerships to exist. Uh, we were incorporated in 1997 by the Department of Arts and Culture uh, between them and uh, Corporate South Africa. So we have over 150 corporate members that sit on our membership list mm. and they pay a, 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 an annual fee to be on that list. So. Uh, as I've mentioned that our job is to ensure that those partnerships are leveraged for corporates to invest in the arts. So the awards are essentially to celebrate those partnerships that exist where corporate companies, uh, government and municipalities have come 
to, to, to the art sector to support artists and arts projects. Mm. But it's not often that you get to see um, the government working together with, with private companies coming together. So how do you find that um, working out for, for the business? Uh, I mean, from business and arts uh, perspective, we find that government does support um, the arts. Mm -hmm. uh, contrary to popular belief. I mean, um, for the mere fact that the Department of Arts and Culture supports us in a lot of our programs that are aimed at really um, and helping corporates understand the arts, arts and culture sector. Mm. So there, there are synergies. We do have programs that involve both the private sector and government. Mm. And most of the works that are, are, are done through, through BASA are really to help out a lot of people in the community. Can you just tell us a bit about that? Well, um, I think uh, Sepa could probably speak more sure. about BASA's programs in particular. But, um, you know, from, from my point of view, as a, as a judge on the awards, um, it's, it's wonderful for us coming in as arts lovers and some of us being arts practitioners working in the industry um, to actually see how an organisation like BASA um, brings um, arts organisations mm. and companies together with government buy-in. Um, because, uh, like Seppo said, there is, a, there is a perception that, you know, government perhaps only targets certain sectors for funding. Mm. But they, they do a lot for the arts. But also, equally, corporate South Africa, from your big banks to your cell phone giants, also to the smaller businesses, mm. actually do support a lot of arts projects. And, but in very innovative ways that go beyond sponsorship mm. to really address the triple bottom line, if you like, of people... Uh, planets and profits, mm. not just profits anymore. How challenging was it to get to the 44 nominees that you have right now? And also, what is the criteria and how do we know how do you get to pick who the winner is in each category? Well, you know, I th the, we had to go through scores and scores of entries in the 11 categories. Mm. Um, and they each provide a very detailed motivation. Um, for why they should be a finalist in the category. And it, it speaks to um, the financial component of a project, the sponsorship, um, the legacy of the project, what it was about, how it benefited both sides, very importantly. Mm. Because, like I said, you know, we've gone beyond mere handouts to arts organisations. The business must also benefit in terms of um, brand equity, reputation, um, they must also get something out of it, mm. you know, so it's not just a one-sided um, deal. Mm. So we were looking at things like that and then we also, you know, we had to look at the impact on society and who was being benefited by it. Mm. What was great to see is there were a lot of um, arts education projects, development projects, targeting schools, young people, um, disadvantaged communities. And yeah, so we had quite a, a rigorous um, voting process mm. to, to get to the finalists, which, uh, and the process was audited, and we're very happy with the finalists that we came out with, and we think mm. there's going to be some great and very happy winners tomorrow. Awesome. So, obviously, it's, you're celebrating tw two decades, um, so tomorrow's um, awards are going to be different from what we're usually used to. Um, can you tell us a bit about that quickly? We have to wrap. All right, um, historically our awards have always been a bow and tie affair, but tomorrow uh, we're taking them out at a sculpture park mm -hmm. in Joburg, mm -hmm. and it'll be an outdoor event, it'll be a picnic kind of setup. Mm. Uh, we'll have performances from moving into dance, we'll, we'll have the Field Band Foundation present, mm. uh, we'll have as well the Standard Bank Young Artists, Jazz Musicians present, so it'll be a beautiful day. Well, we definitely yeah. can't wait for that. I'm definitely going to be there. So check it out on Trends next week. Um, thank you so much, guys, for coming through. Um, we're going to take a quick break. If I were you, I wouldn't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. New York Harlem-born graffiti world urban artist John Wan was in South Africa last week to celebrate the seventh edition of the very special limited edition series. He went on a bike tour in Soweto exploring the graffiti done by South Africa's international visual artist Senzon Sapo and other great South African graffiti artists. The night, of course, ended with a bang at Zone 6, the venue, where music and live artwork came together on one stage. Let's take a look. In light of keeping it fresh, one of the biggest brands from 1765 has an artistic vision that is currently in its 8th edition. 
Hennessy Very Special has had a long history of, of collaborations with artists. Um, in fact, John One's collaboration is the eighth in the series. Um, we launched it in South Africa some years ago, and it's been proved to be tremendously successful for us. So, John was an artist who, like us, he's he's really warm spirited, um, full of energy, and, and certainly an artist that uh, that was identified by the Maison as someone who who personifies the brand. I had seen what they had done with other artists and I was praying that one day they would pick me and it's more or less to help artists grow. And uh, artists is constantly growing and going to different adventures and, and going, trying to, to, to reach the maximum of his potentials. And that's like what collaboration we've done together is. The objective of this collaboration campaign is to have the graffiti artist create a standalone piece that expresses the vision of this brand. I wanted to make it something very festive, very colorful, and something that people can share a moment together. So I think it makes a perfect marriage. It's not like I did my images on a computer or it's something very conceptual so you have to really just use your head. This is, this is a work of artisanal, of using your hands, of tradition. Sort of like the tradition I've had coming from painting in New York to now painting in Soweto and, and looking at the beautiful artwork of Senzo Art, a, a, a talented artist from essays from South Africa. The Harlem-born urban artist went on a graffiti bike tour with our very own Senzo to check out the finest artwork in Soweto. I come from a different story, a different history, a different time. I'm, I'm a product from the 80s, you know. So watching Senzo and watching his studios and going to the art schools um, that um, he goes and teaches at, um, I say to myself that it's a beautiful story because the story of um, Soweto in South Africa is an interesting story and it's a good place where creation can flourish like flowers, you know. Here, of course, you see a lot of um, concrete and separations and barbed wires and this and that. And I don't think it should be something that um, is the end game. I think it should be something that um, should push for creativity because I come from a similar type of environment and um, it makes more of a reason of why to express themselves and, and, and be as colorful and, and as you can be. Later on that evening, we were at Zone 6, the venue in Soweto, where John Wan was doing a live painting on stage. The energy level was there, and, um, and then also we had like um, good African, um, South African performers after, you know, so um, the people were really treated to something really special tonight. And you say, you know what, I think John Wan would love you to show him about graffiti or street art in Soweto. And then, yes, uh, he came in and to me it was a privilege and, and a, an amazing experience where it was a highlight of my career as a Sowetan fit, you know what I mean? Yo, this is John 1 and Oweyo, Oweyo, Trends, that's it, we're in a place to be. That party was so lit, you have no idea. Um, 12 candidates have been selected to compete in the finale for the title of the Eastgate Look of Fashion 2017. The top three winners at this year's competition will gain automatic entry into the Miss South Africa 2018 semi-finalist interview round, proving that the look of fashion is a stepping stone into the world of beauty and fashion. Well, the main event is set to take place next week, Saturday, and I'm now joined by the top 12 finalists. You can see them over there and Henry Bauer, who is the founder of the uh, project, to tell us a bit more about this competition. Welcome to Trends, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Henry, tell us a bit about this competition. When did it come up and why did you decide that maybe let's do something from a mall and look into, into fashion? This is something that people barely do. I'll tell you what happened, Kat. We officially started in the 1900s mm -hmm. and we just did it for the tenants' sake, etc., and to actually have the fashion trend out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually glad to be on trends. Mm -hmm. And um, then what happened was we took it to a stage where we lifted it and brought the girls out there. So we opened it up to everybody and gave the girls the opportunity to enter and put them on a platform to go further. But how does it work that this type of competition will get you into Miss SA? Uh, are we saying that beauty and looks is what can make someone 
a, a representative or a flower of South Africa? To be the flower and to get there doesn't only take the beauty, it mm -hmm. also takes brains. And I must say, these girls are very clever. Um, we've got some interns here, we've got studying law, etc., etc. So they're clever, they're beautiful, mm. and they've got an ambition to get somewhere and to represent South Africa. Which makes you wonder, how do you then be in the mall and you see people passing say okay she looks great i think she should be in the competition and then how do you know that actually she is smart or she has a great background from just how she looks in the mall i think after 35 years um, <laughs> i've got sort of a radar it's tuned in okay. and i've got scouts that help me so we actually see the beauty in these girls as plain as what they are in the mall on the shopping spree or coming from the gym mm. we corner them and we then get photos done and put some makeup on them and we then take the photos and we actually get to, out of 400 the, this year, we got down to 30, mm. which then did interview rounds so that we can see if there's some brains involved as well, <laughs> which there is, yes. I must tell you, I was mm -hmm. very pleasantly surprised. If we possibly could, we would have taken all 30. Mm. And um, now we are down to 12, which is also a pity because they, there was 30 beautiful girls, 30 brainy girls, and I'd love to give them all an opportunity. But at the moment, we've got the 12 that really stand out, and that is really getting an opportunity to go to Italy, to Paris, as well as getting to the interview round for the Miss Essays. So, so we're hoping to have a Miss Essay again from Eastgate Look of Fashion. Yes, because you had two winners that it looks like this um, competition actually is proven to be a great recipe because it's gotten us two Miss Essays out of it, you know? Yes, it has, and a Miss Essay team, Celeste Kamala. So we, it's, it's a very big stepping stone and I'm hoping to see that our next girl is a Miss Essay because they honestly work hard. There's a lot of work involved in it. This is not only beauty, it's really hard work. Mm. They really sweat mm. and um, they get a, a taste of the mini. South Africa. Let's talk South a bit Africa. about that sweat. Ladies, how hard has it been? It was it was more fun than hard. Please give her the mic for her to speak to us. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it's been m way more fun than hard work. We get so much exposure, we meet so many new people, we get out of our comfort zones. It's amazing. I've had an incredible time. Mm. So I'd like one of you to tell me what outfit you were wearing when you got spotted in the mall. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. You got spotted. No, I can't speak Bra to you. <laughs> I was actually wearing my scrubs because I came from hospital. <laughs> Whoa. So I had maroon scrubs on, I had my badge, I had my stethoscope, it was a great time and that's how I got spotted. <laughs> so I guess that, that's one of the things where, where the brain part comes in, you, you figured, okay, she looks, she looks like a doctor or someone who's in the medical field, great, someone, to, someone great to pick up, right? Yes, but you know what, even without makeup and in scrubs, she was just beautiful, she's just naturally beautiful and I thought, well, can't let go of this one mm. and she's made it through to the finals. Mm. Can someone please tell me about the process? I mean, after they select you, really, what goes down? <laughs> um, we usually just, we were at the interviews at Mount Suvani's at Eastgate Look of Fashion mm. um, for, the, uh, for the prelims. And then um, from there on, it was like flash mobs. We went to Edgar's, Old Khaki. They sponsored our clothes for the flash mobs. And we just tried to get people to know about the competition and come visit Eastgate Mall to support us and be there for everything. So it's more like promoting everyone in all the stores that's sponsoring us. Mm. So did anyone have to be literally begged and pleaded like, okay, no, I don't want to be in this because I'm not about pageants there's, there's and all of that, but you are here today. <laughs> Mishka, give that one to Mishka. Oh yes. <laughs> Um, I must say, this was a really great opportunity for me. I am 17 years old. Mm. And on a Friday, I think, I just got home from Pretoria. I live in Johannesburg. I was writing an exam that morning. And I got a phone call. 
the afternoon actually at two o'clock oh. from Hunley and she's like Mishka where are you it's your interview for the Eastgate look of fashion and I'm like what because uh, what happened was there was a mistake they had an incorrect digit in my cell phone number so they couldn't get hold of me on my email address or my cell phone number so I had no idea about this but I was truly honored when I got that phone call I couldn't believe it so within 45 minutes I got my hair done got my makeup done I quickly pulled out an outfit and I showed up at Eastgate and I did my best and you won't believe it here I am in the top 12. Mm. So how does it feel for you to know that you actually stand a chance of being Miss South Africa? At this young age it definitely is extraordinary I feel honored I mean I am definitely going to work hard which means my opportunity might be a bit limited due to my age but I'm going to work as hard as I can because you never know what trend I might set you never know what I might leave behind it might be legendary you know so it definitely is a huge honor and a great opportunity for me to step into the future with this mm. so you know every pageant goes along with like world peace or having like a greater cause for why <laughs> you, you're doing this whole thing so for you are there any interests that you want to do for for the society and the community once you get to grab um, and be the crowning uh, of Miss South Africa well should that happen I would definitely be on it and with the prizes that I get I would definitely want to share and be a part of any community work or charity work to give back what I have gained I mean I am working hard not only for myself mm. but for my family as well and for the community around me and just to improve the lives of others with all that I gain from this experience okay well thank you ladies for speaking to us you're all looking so lovely so snatched Thank you. Um, so, Henry, tell us a bit about what's going to happen after this. So, we're down to 12. How do we get to, to, to the last people that are going through? To the top three. Mm -hmm. um, next weekend, on the 23rd, mm -hmm. we'll all be at Eastgate for the finale. Mm -hmm. And the girls will be absolutely groomed and at their best. And they, we have a whole choreo, you know, the choreographer has done a whole worked out show with entertainers, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I can mention them, can I? You can. It's Lyra Ooh, and nice. Josh Ansley from The Voice and Freddie from The Voice. Okay, well, we so look forward to that. You said the 23rd of September, 23rd right? of September, we start shop at 11 mm -hmm. and they will be at their best and wearing the most awesome outfits. And um, yes, it's all up to them now. So the top three will be announced on Saturday and they will be receiving their prizes and then we know who we're going to jet off to Italy with and to Paris etc. Mm, well we are definitely likers of things so you're probably going to see us there as well and we might be covering that on the 23rd so if you know like go to Eastgate Shopping Mall on the 23rd and go check out the three people that will be definitely going through to the round of Miss Essay. So um, the Maros Arch and Maros Gallery have partnered to launch an annual urban sculpture exhibition titled Sculpt X Fair. Um, the a large group sculpture show features works from about 40 leading and emerging South African and international sculptors in the gallery and throughout the urban precinct. Let's take a look at what went down. Bystanders can't help but notice this Casper which has stolen the limelight of the Sculpt X Fair. This book, as it was previously known in the townships, was used to scare and kill black people during the apartheid era. Now Casper has a new look. About 20 Ndebele artists partnered to change the well-known history of Kespa, draping the spook with Ndebele beads. These colorful beads are strong enough to resist extreme weather or heat. What was the idea of redecorating the whole uh, military type, I mean, truck? So it was very much taking spook one and instead of having people see it as a sign of oppression and fear, was to reclaim it and make it African to show people that this is not something to be afraid of. You don't give it power anymore. Let's take it back and make it our own. So this is very much now a symbol of strength because you've got the diverse heritage of South Africa and its peoples in beads on the truck now. Now it's very much, this is as tough as South Africa is now. We're as strong as a Casper MK2. We don't have to fear the Casper. Sculpt X aims to add to the beauty of the precinct while providing a variable platform for sculptors to showcase their works as well as add value to those who work, live and play in Melrose Arch. The fair included the second monograph of recently passed sculptor Paul Dutoy. Some of these large sculptures will grace public areas throughout the precinct on a permanent basis. Sculptex is a sculptural exhibition. It's the brainchild of Craig Mark, who's one of the owners of the gallery. 
he started playing around with the idea earlier this year about creating a sculptural fair uh, in the Melrose Precinct, something that's never been done before, and involving the works of South Africa's top artists, top sculptors, along with up-and-coming sculptors, giving them a platform to associate with the great artists, to actually get their work out there and exposed. Well-known artist Pitika Ntuli is also one of the main contributors to this fair. His sculptures tell the story of the events that took place in Marikana. Organizers of this fair hope Sculpt X Park will become a popular destination for art lovers and tourists alike. Other sculptures will be rolled out at different times throughout the year. Sculptures exhibited inside the gallery will be on until the 8th of October. See, I did tell you that we have a lot of art and showbiz news to give you this week, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a break with a whole lot more. Uh, a done against the... the Cape Town-born soul R&B singer Batavisa Viela is no stranger in the music industry. She broke into the music scene in 2015 and has never looked back ever since. Um, she was a backup artist for the likes of Proverb, Reason, J Something and many others. But her biggest break came earlier this year in a fiery feature with Cuesta Dakar on one of my favorite love songs, Ngas Felangawe. I'm sure you know by now who I'm talking about. Tapsi, yes, of course. She's in studio with us. Um, she dropped her debut single earlier in the year um, titled Cry featuring Kid X. Um, she's working on her debut album. They'll be hitting the shelf soon, sometime at the end of this month. Um, welcome, Tapsi. Hey, thank you for having me. How are you doing, babe? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm great. So let's talk a bit about why you decided to go into music. I mean, girl, you were a banker. Who <laughs> leaves all that dough for music? <laughs> Um, because I wasn't passionate about banking and I was passionate about music. Mm. So I took the leap last year, I quit my job and decided that beginning of this year I'm going to focus fully on music. Mm. And it's been working out pretty awesome so far. So yeah. yeah. So like a lot of people really, really, really love the song that, that you did with Quista. Yes. Can you tell us a bit yes, about Fela. the experience of doing that song and being around the world and touring with yeah. him all over the place? Yeah. No, that song has definitely changed my life personally and um, it's Chris and I got together, got to in studio two years ago and we wrote and co-wrote and, and, and recorded the song. Yeah. But we didn't think it was going to be like a big hit, you know. It, it's like on his second disc towards the end of the, of the album. Mm. And it's on they hit you with the wings, a big wing. Which is very rare for a rapper to have that like heartfelt, soft, um, real song. Um, so I was just really or, like excited to be a part of the song and I never in a million years thought that you know it would pick up and and, and become what it's become yeah. Um, so yeah it's, it's absolutely amazing the the country connects with it the continent connects with it on a different level so it's been an amazing journey so far. Mm. So yeah. you've dropped two singles this year. I have, yes. Um, you worked with Kid X in the mm -hmm. beginning of the year. Um, so it looks like you and Rap Life, you have a thing. Uh, eh? What's happening? Everyone always says that. They, you know, Rap Life is family, man. They, mm -hmm. They've really supported my journey and my growth. Um, and it's great because the beginning stage is for me. So they're definitely family. And funny enough, I never planned to work with like Kid X and Questa. It just kind of mm. naturally happened. Mm. Yeah. So tell us about these singles that you've dropped this year. and how they kind of the feel that's going to give us from those two albums about those singles about your album yeah. that's coming so the first single was cry mm -hmm. and that's uh, as you said features kid x that one is a very personal song very very um deep it talks about heartbreak and something that i was going through at the time um and then i just released african queen which for me is probably my favorite song on the album mm. um it's like my girl anthem and it just celebrates beautiful african women and it speaks about African kings making African queens out of their women. So it's, it really is a celebratory song and, yeah, a, a, like a perfect summer vibe. So it gives a good kind of, like, I don't know, a taste of what the, the album is going to be. Uh, which so is how would we classify it? What kind of sound is it? Because you're so R&B singer, yes, but I'm you're really working with so many hip-hop artists. So yes. was the album more R&B-ish or does it have like a lot of hip elements to it? The album is just like, it's, it's a lot of elements. So, I mean, I'm an R&B girl, but I, I sing to like hip-hop tracks mm. and I've got some Afro-pop going on. Mm. So it's, it's an array of sounds. Um, yeah. 
And you drop, you just dropped the the video for African I Queen. I just dropped the video for African ah, Queen. Very tell us about that. Like, how are people responding to the song? People love the video. I think what I wanted to, I wanted to keep it very simple and and very literal. You know, so mm. there's a lot of color. I'm wearing like amazing African print outfits. I've got a very yummy eye candy <laughs> in the video who's yes, like my so African necessary. king. Yes, very, very, that's for the ladies. I did that mm -hmm. for the ladies. Um, but people are loving it. People are loving, you know, just how, how it makes them feel, the song and even the video. So mm. very, very excited about so, it. So obviously you have Kidex. Are uh, you going to have more collaborations in the album? Who yes, have you been yes, working yes. with? So obviously Kidex is on the album. JR is on African Queen. Mm. Um, I've done another song with Questa. Um, and then I even have Sifo back on the album. So he nice. doesn't really... He's not really part of the music industry anymore. He's in the background, but he came out. He came back. Just for you. you. Know, just for me. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So what else can we expect? What's going to be happening? I mean, it's festive season. Yes. People are performing all over the place. Where should we expect to see you? Um, well, I'm going to be all over the place. I'm, 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 I'm really going to have a jam-packed summer. Um, the album is coming out next week, Friday, Songs mm. About You, on the 22nd. So from there, we're just pushing the album. This is the year of introduction for me, so I'm really just like getting out there, connecting with the, the supporters, connecting with the people that love the music. Um, you'll catch me performing with Questa a lot as well. So, yeah, just, just stay tuned to my social media. and I'm sure fan base has blowed up, ne? It's crazy. So insane, <laughs> so insane. Well, everybody, that was Tapsy. Thank you so much, babe, Thank for coming you. through to speak to us. She's going to be performing a little later on in the show. Um, the seventh annual Savannah Comics Choice Awards look um, took place uh, last Saturday at the Lyric Theatre in Johannesburg, themed the freedom of funny. The awards celebrated the power that humor has to break down barriers and open borders between African countries, as well as encourage the free flow of comedy talent. Let's take a look. Oh it was definitely a night filled with laughter, also aimed at celebrating the finest in South African comedy. With seven years in existence, the Comics Choice Awards recognized top 11 of the best comedians in the country. The late comedian Cyril Grin was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award. He died in July. Ebenezer Tibakwane, who last year walked away with the popular Savannah Newcomers Award, scooped this year's Intermediate Award. Uh, you know, it ain't nothing but a thing now. It's just a habit of winning. I'm joking. I am ecstatic. I, I just want to go home and work right now. That's all it is. I don't want to be caught up in the euphoria. It's my heroes, man. My heroes voted for me. I won because they think that I'm doing something special, and I appreciate that. I'm in a very good, good space. The Nando's best friend of Comedy Award once again went to Goliath and Goliath. Skumba Sope, Alton Dudu's in Duli, Tabi Somsongo and Mujek Lihoko were also some of the big winners. I feel so overwhelming. Um, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. Actually, I want to thank my people, my parents, uh, my sisters and my brother. I would like to thank Abandubasa uh, Siabuswa. I would like to say to them, Gatoza i Segelolenu. And I would like to thank everyone who I work with, the comedians and the Savannah Comics Choice for this brilliant um, event. And I want to thank all of my, 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 my friends. This is the first year that the Savannah Pan-African Comic of the Year Award was introduced. A Nigerian comedian, Basket Mouth, begged this award. I feel very great. Uh, last year I came to present the award for the best comedian of the year. And this year I'm going home with one. So it's a great feeling. Um, it's not, you know, when you walk, you do a gig, you get paid for it. You don't appreciate it as much as when you get an award because that's a trade. This one is more or less an appreciation. And this is what, you know, this is what matters, you know. For Luandi Lempukuzela, who is a comedy host in the Eastern Cape, for upcoming and well-established comedians, these awards are a dream come true. I am starting my own thing back in the Eastern Cape. We saw an opportunity that most comedians uh, that come here in Joburg, they are based in smaller towns and they come here for the, for, to make it in Joburg. So we decided to create an opportunity back at home so that they can have an easier way when they're here in Joburg, so they can quickly make it rather than taking about five years or ten years, as we've heard that's Kumba was saying in his speech. In the upcoming years, the Comics Choice Awards will expand to include all African countries. So the guy from Tembisa. So local drama series Isidingo is celebrating 19 years since its premiere on SABC3 in 1998. 
1998, can you believe it? The celebrations took place at Goldroof City, south of Johannesburg, where the cast was treated to a dinner. The storyline mostly revolves al around uh, residents from a mining town called Horizon Deep. Let's take a look. <laughs> There could not have been a better way of celebrating this milestone than this. Old and new cast members of this much-loved soapy under one roof. Isidingo is renowned for always offering exceptional and challenging storylines that touch real-life moments like politics and many other life aspects. We caught up with head writer of the soapy, Pumla Oba, who has been with Isidingo from the beginning. It's been such a journey. Interesting, very interesting, um, because... I was there from the first day, and 19 years later, here we are. Um, so it, it's been, it's got its ups, it's got its downs, but it's been very interesting, it's been very exciting. That's why we're still here. What would the series be without the conflicts between Baka Haynes, the Sbeko family, and the controversy that arise because of the cutting edge storylines? We met with some of the cast members who have given themselves to the soaping. 15 years it is, so it is, gives you an idea about how long I've, I've created, built, and evolved the character. And it's just been an absolute adventure. It's been a wonderful journey, and it continues to unfold. Um, I remember when I started off and I was just in awe of all these incredible performers who were there. And it was an interesting time for the show, making the transition from the little mining town, going into the TV business. And um, fortunately, that created a gap for Rajesh. And it's good to see that Raj is still there. It's the best thing every day. You know why? Because the cast is mad. Everyone is just so excited. So it's a journey that we all look, for, look forward to. Listen, nothing blesses you like waking up in the morning and going to do what you look forward to doing. And I thank God I'm grateful for that every single day because I think it's just it's a huge honor. Uh, but also being on a show like Isi Dingo, it's, the show's got such a great brand and it's had such a great brand for, for many years. So I remember I mean, when I was at school, I used to go, I want to act, but I want to be on Isi Dingo. And don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. But I was an extra. I was an extra guy one. And I was like, I'm going to be extra, yo, guy one. I was like, I did it for once. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it again. You know, but then I went back and there were auditions and, and I was like, I'll come, I'll keep coming until I get a role. That makes sense. And, and it finally happened. It's been an amazing two years odd. I've, I've been with this dingo for just over two years. I came, I went away, and I came back, and I'm still around. Um, it, it's, it's, been a, it's, it's been an amazing roller coaster ride of, of beautiful storytelling, and you know, you look forward to getting scripts every day so that you can go prepare and then tell South Africa these beautiful stories. I've been a fan of Isi Dingo for as long as I can remember. And on top of it, it doesn't even feel like, oh my gosh, I should freak out about anything. No one is a star. Everyone is pretty chilled. Everyone takes people through everything. The top is nice. People at the top, they're very really nice. The energy is amazing. And most of the time, it doesn't even feel like work. So... <laughs> Just in case you're wondering what happens behind the scenes, trends captured the moments giving you a glimpse of the drama that unfolds with every episode. Isi Dingo continues to entertain millions of South African viewers on SAPC3. <laughs> I'm his African queen. He wanna love me. Wamba mashole, wamba kefika, wamba my hips, kiss me on my lips. He said that I'm his African queen. He wanna love me. I'm his African queen, and he wanna love me.
coach wins with him and what happened over the weekend Franco Smith have to Since it's Heritage Month and all, we thought we would give you something fresh and also deep-rooted into culture. 24-year-old Eastern Cape born rapper, poet, performer, actor, script writer, and all-rounder really. He calls himself a creative artist because he dabbles into literally everything. Zutolo Ngeto, better known as Lolo Vandal in the streets, spent his formative years soaking up all the knowledge of classics and has turned that experience into a sound that only he can explain. He dropped his 13th track debut album titled Siakela in April. He's with us in studio today to speak to us about his breakthrough in the game. Lolo, thank you so much for coming through to Trends and welcome. Yeah, yeah, I know in the Bolela Bolela. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's Heritage Month, and, yeah. and you know how important it is for us to look into culture, you know? And yes. it's not often that you find a lot of people in the youth really exploring and wanting to, to rap in, in their mother tongue. Just yeah. tell us a bit about that and why you decided to go for that angle. Okay, like uh, before the Indian the name Kondo, and I would like to welcome everyone and say thank you to SAPC for this uh, opportunity. Ulolo Vandal, uh, he's, he's one rapper who uses the language yeah, okay, because of he knows that the identity yeah, it's something that will never be taken away from you. Mm. You know, so they can take everything that you own or whatever, but your identity is what represents you. Mm. So it's Tosa, I know that for a fact, it's Tosa has been there and it's Tosa, it's a language that needs so that everyone can understand it and know that we need to know ourselves. Once you know where you're coming from, you will definitely know where you're going to. Mm. Yeah. Well, tell us a bit about that, where you came from in order for you to get to th to this part. Yes. Just the journey in how you got to this breakthrough. I know how difficult it can yeah. be in the rap game. Yes, the industry. The thing is, it's all about it's sacrifice and perseverance. No, 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 no. You know, mm. when you know that at the end of the day, even if, but if you know the end goal, mm. and then you will never go wrong, you know? And understanding how dark the industry is, and understanding that there is a point whereby you will have to lose yourself, but you don't have to lose yourself, mm. you know? But when that time comes, you have to be ready, you know? It took a lot from me, and I know that a lot of people out there, and then think, ah, he just woke up and yeah, well, he made it. But it's been it's been a, a, like an amazing journey since 2007 until today. You know, it's mm. been it's been it's been hectic. Yeah, but so it's all about being strong and holding on. <laughs> yeah. So your your experience your experiences shaped you into creating this kind of sound. What do we call it? You you can just say it's it's strictly closer rap. Mm -hmm. You know, it's closer rap because you know. There, there's poetry, you know, but then with poetry we have to add a rhythm, you know, so that people can move and yabo. Yeah, because if we just speak, 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 people will get bored, mm. you know. So it's poetry, but then it's rap, you mm. know. So city when you say poetry, no rhythm, you know. So yabo yeah, rap, mm. and yeah. you know, poetry obviously d just doesn't go as just like <laughs> being screw screw, you know. You gotta have like some serious <laughs> lyrics that are that's going with that. So tell us a bit of about the content that's in your music? Okay, the content, it comes from the heart and from the experience and the things that I've been through as Lolo Vandal because I convert my journey into music. Mm. Each and everything that I experience, me being here today, sometime, like someday you will hear it on a song, you mm. know, but mm. was once on trends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do that. Yeah. Please, like, please yeah, just yeah, do that thing. So uh, what, what I do, detach everything, like experience yeah, and because at the end of the day, we all need to share a story, mm. you know? Mm. So music, it's a gift that was given to me, writing skill, mm. so I think it's best in your band, whatever that I go through, 
and then he tate he take into a song so that the next person can understand you know, about who Lolo Vandal is mm. and where he is coming from. You yeah. know, that's why each and every song that I write, there is a message behind. You know, it's not about. Yeah, well, mm. even Ukutala, the song that I just performed, it's a song dedicated to all the music legends that shaped our industry. Mm. Because if you if, if if you check our music industry from 2005, you know, mm. to the 90s, 96, 90, you know, mm. there's a change. There's a change. But then there are people who shaped that industry and there are people who sacrificed themselves mm. for this industry to be what it is today. Mm. You know, so since so you dropped in, in April, tell us quickly about Siakela. We, we have to wrap up. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a free package that I released on um, 27 April, you know, Freedom Day. You know, I just wanted people to, to have it, you know, mm. and to just to... To, to listen to the lyrics on top of on top of the beat, mm. you know, mm. without <laughs> hide no, no, we don't play hide and seek. Mm. We just so scroll, scroll. tell you know, we tell it like <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. If you, if what you're doing is wrong, we just tell it like it is. If what you're doing is right, we just tell it like it is. So the album was, and it was an album that I, I wanted to motivate each and every artist that is out there, you mm. know, because some people think you need a record label, you need to be out at music for you to make it. Mm. You can push your music for free. The internet is there. Mm. You can push your music, and then these are the platforms that we need to push the brand so that people can believe that we are a brand. Lolo Vandal is a brand yeah. so that they can buy. You know, okay, yeah. please go buy. Lolo <laughs> Vandal is a brand. Thank you so much for coming through on Trends. Um, so September 11, 2001 marks a sad day in the history of the United States. It's the tragic events of the bombing of the World Trade, Trade Center in New York City. This ordeal is being depicted in a film titled 9-11. Based on real life events, the movie is a retraction of a stage play entitled Elevator by Patrick Carson. The film stars the likes of Charlie Sheen and Whoopi Goldberg. It was officially released on September 8th. Let's take a look. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families in America. It's a story about heroes. It's a story about um, really honoring those that, 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 that sacrificed everything and, you know, those that, that, that didn't make it um, and those that did. In a way, 9-11 is our own personal story because we lived through it. I really, you know, I live in that area. My apartment's like eight blocks from the World Trade Center. This is one that really focuses on, on uh, what happened um, on, a, on a more internal um, uh, scope. Where are my elevators? What my hope is with this movie is that when people see it, they will understand that we're trying to add to the fabric of 9-11. Is anybody there? Can anybody hear me? Damn. I never, I never knew that perspective. I never knew the perspective of people that were stuck on the elevators. At that point, you're pretty much in your own coffin. You just happen to be sharing it with other people. Anybody? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Circle that, and we move on. The story tells itself, and it's kind of a traditional filmmaking in the sense that characters tell the story and the images follow the characters, the images follow the story. You gotta tell us what's going on in here, We want to tell in one story, a story about five people from different backgrounds, from different places that are coming in to tell a story of their survival. Every department from all over the city is here. I just need you to hang in there. Hang in there, that's all we're doing is hanging in here. Where's the help, lady? The story in the script, how it handles that day, such a unique perspective. Maybe I think we're under attack. What? They're not aware of all of the details of what is going on outside. They're, they're fed bits of information as the movie progresses by you know, by, by an outside source.
a really, really sad story in, in the history of um, America, you know. So it's that time, it's that time. We really have to say goodbye. I don't want to go, but um, all good things must come to an end. And we all know that an hour is not enough, but we tried to put in all the entertainment and arts news that have happened right now. Um, so we're going to play out with a dope track by Lolo. So let's check it out and say goodbye from me. Bye. Dala Sabalaza, Dala Sabalaza, come on, Dala Sabalaza, Dala Sabalaza, come on, Dala Sabalaza, Dala Sabalaza. You must say, okay, like he's a legend. Sis Brenda Fast, she's a legend. Doc Shebeleza, he's a legend. Speaky Re, he's a legend. You want Chaka Chaka. Yeah. Moses Kumalo, he's a legend. Zip Nawana, he's a legend. Lebu Matosa, she's a legend. Dala Sabalaza, Dala Sabalaza. Everybody see, yeah. Dala Sabalaza. Dalla Sabalaza